putting them to rest. Putting them to rest. So what we've done already is constructed a, a temporary storage pond here so that this water, if it, if it overcomes this basin, will flow down to that temporary storage pond so that when flows reduce, we can pump out of that pond and get it back to the treatment facility before it leaves the wastewater treatment plant campus. Still be reported as a release. <coughs> you may see it in the paper. It may say, with the Coochie wastewater treatment plant, two million gallons filled. It never left the campus. It's going to be reported as a sewage field in the Whistler Coochie Basin. Uh, Mud Creek is our other plant, uh, which is across town that handles primarily our commercial customers. Uh, heavy industry goes to this plant. On a normal day, it gets 2.53 million gallons of flow. Uh, during the rain events, uh, we received about 7 million gallons of flow into this plant. Uh, you know, we uh, also rehab this facility and uh, we suffered, we had, no, uh, we had no issues at this plant during the, uh, during the storm. Correct. Right, what was the temporary storm contract capacity? The, the one that's out there now is probably about a million dollars. We're still, uh, you know, we're working through uh, some engineering plans and uh, getting uh, everything in line to do to build a permanent structure. Yeah, it'd be capable of holding eight to ten million gallons of, uh, of flow on that new so There was a uh, slide. Okay, so you know, what do we want to do next? Uh, you know, we've got to continue working on the rehabilitation of our sewer collection system uh, to stop these sanitary overflows, and uh, uh, we're going to continue to uh, maximize the. Uh, Efficiency at the facilities. We got a couple of upgrades. Some of those upgrades that we want to do at Wilmacochi is that construction of that permanent facility to handle eight to ten million gallons of additional flow that would come to make sure it stays on campus. And we can get that pumped back through the system. So once we're permitted from for that, once we've constructed it and we have our permit in hand, then when it overflows there, it's not considered a spill, so it won't be reported as a spill. But until, until we have a updated permit, <coughs> we get a release, even if we capture it all, pump it back to the system, we have to report it as a sanitary sewer release. What is your timeline on that? On the new, on the new construction? Uh, the DEP, oh, DEP. I was down there 25 years ago. Uh, ETD has uh, <coughs> plans right now. Uh, we have 30% drawings completed and uh, we anticipate that we'll be getting that permit over the next couple of weeks, we're hoping. We were up there on Monday having a conversation with them, and uh, part of the conversation was when we were going to get that permit. Yeah, we asked for them to expedite that permit on Monday. But you know, we're ready to move. We have equipment actually sitting, the excavator was already out there, or was out there, we have moved it by now, but it was on site, ready to go whenever we get the <laughs> approval. And, and you know, some folks might say, "Why don't you just dig it on?" You know, but that's not that simple. You know, if you dig, if you're dealing with sanitary sewer, you need a lift station out there. Once you pump it into the end there, you got to keep it from going septic. So you got to put aeration in the pond. Uh, so you got, you got to put a liner underneath the pond to keep anything from getting into the soil. So it's going to be, you know, it's two million dollar project. So it's not something you just go out there and spend a couple hundred thousand dollars and you're done. Significant uh, project to make sure this thing operates the way that we need it to. I'm going to ask, what did it cost to dig the temporary pond that you had to hose? Uh, we did it. So uh, it was metal? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we jumped on the excavator and, and uh, what, did it. What's the holding capacity at that pond? It's about a million dollars, I suspect. So you have about a million dollars of flood right now that you can hold in that pond. In, a, in addition to that 6.5, so about 7.5 total on site today. Uh, in case we had we had a release. Uh, right? That's a yes. What was the uh, release? What do you what do you think of the gallon release during the fifteen and training and tell when you took in the thirty? Yeah. We reported twenty million gallons, but and, and that's a good question. Thank you for allowing us to expand on that. So we reported twenty million gallons release. If you think the plane only typically gets three million gallons. 
So we were getting 30 million gallons in there. So 90%, 94% of that stormwater coming into the plant. But once it gets to the plant, if it's released from the plant, we report it as a wastewater release, not a stormwater release. But uh, 3 million gallons of that moving during a normal day, 3.5 million, is wastewater. Your release, is it released before it goes into the plant after it goes, after you reach that capacity? Does it release after it comes out of the plant or before it goes into the plant? Uh, it releases out of this storage basin here. So we have automation. The flow comes in this direction, it comes into the heavy works. When the computer system sees things, these have reached maximum capacity. It goes into storm mode. You know, normal processing, 15 to 20 days, you know, it goes into storm mode, it starts to accelerate that processing time. So using you know, a lot more power, a lot more chemical, that's uh, going to storm mode. So the plant automatically goes into storm mode. All of that work, the way it was designed to work. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when these reach maximum capacity, uh, automation opens a valve over here and starts to send a portion of that flow over to this basin. So when this basin became full, this basin overflowed into this area. So basically, the water release at that point had never been through the plant at all. No, sir. All right, SCADA system. Uh, we talked a little bit about the SCADA system. Uh, we think that's going to be, you know, we're you know, so close to getting everything in place that we need to make to maximize our dollars. Uh, the SCADA system is going to allow, allow us to pinpoint where those inflows are coming from. <coughs> from lift stations and from manholes. So we're, we're going to monitor the flows coming <coughs> into the plant. We're going to monitor the flows coming into the lift station. And we're going to monitor the flows before they get to the lift station in manholes. So uh, the collection system is going to have monitors. When the system sees those levels starting to increase, that first spike you get after a rain event, you know, that's 